Okay, so uh, cameras on. Um, I think Hawking, you know, it's sometimes Hawkins might refer it to the observer or the witness. So it doesn't really matter. They're both. Um, it's whatever is preferable. They're just words at the end of the day. Um, the uh, it creates a dualistic perception that there is an observer and there isn't the observed, which is dualistic. Uh, mm. But you know, you have, one has to use a tool. Um, so the way I sort of see it is habitually, unconsciously, the ego is enmeshed or super attached to whether it's a donut and alcohol, to thinking, to uh, being fixated on the body, uh, and to all various belief systems. So it's already like, you know, one is already, if you like, um, attached. So there needs to be a tool, it's just a tool to detach, to unhook, to release an attachment. So like the Course in Miracles, so um, I think the Course in Miracles does have something a bit like, you know, sort of, it's like a conveyor belt and your thoughts are passing by, which is almost like uh, initiating an observing or a witnessing. So, um, yeah, so but if, if a word seems to be giving you trouble, you can just swap it for something else to the witnesser or, or whatever else you need to. Uh, that makes sense. Uh, ultimately, when you, to observe or to witness, uh, the first witnesser may have a, an association with whatever is being witnessed. But if you get to the pure observer, well, in my view, a detached observer will have space, or a detached witnessing will have space between the object and that which is being witnessed, whereas a interested observer, there will be confusion, like, I am the mug. I am my thinking, I am my body, whereas detached observing is like there's a space that opens up and one is aware that the thoughts are not you, the body is not you. I would say in more advanced spiritual states, when total, something is totally collapsed, it disappears, so it no longer ceases to exist. So you'll notice this from your own experience, like when you've been in very strong spiritual states, it's like time disappears, everything becomes very, very present everything becomes very colourful. Even noise, even noise can seem not to affect you in these very advanced spiritual states. But when you're disconnected, it's like you're in your body, everything rattles you, uh, you're picking everything up. Uh, so that's a very attached state. So as you hook into more of the ego stuff, time, if you hook into time, then time exists. If you hook into the body, your body exists. If you hook into your thinking, then thinking exists. And if you hook into noise, the noise exists. So this, this witnessing or observing or whatever you want to call it opens up the space and then finally collapses it so it disappears. But that's very, very advanced. So you'd get someone like um, Hawkins. This is experiential. Not, the words aren't so important. It's the experience. You know, as you, as you release stuff, you, you go into these advanced states of consciousness where uh, you can go into infinite peace, infinite love, uh, infinite, you know, or uh, the timeless now, presence, whatever you want to call it, uh, as, because all the ego tracking, the things the ego is hooking into, uh, are starting to be experienced.